so this episode actually did tap into a social issue, which happens in a lot of the episodes on the quad. Let's talk about it. And I'm like, come on through, cook, yeah. I want to put my soapbox, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for Season 2, Episode 4 of The Quad. Like I said, it did tap into a social issue, which is uh, police brutality, um, so uh, racial profiling, and just the mistreatment of people of color when it comes to the police force. Um we found out right away that when we thought Eva was having a heart attack last week, it was not a heart attack. It was anxiety. She's actually, and that's another thing, she's taking some type of pill for her um, anxiety, okay? And they kind of showed her taking the pill and sitting it on the counter at the end of the episode. And I'm sure that's going to come back, you know, Later on, we're going to, I'm sure we're going to see that again because they made a, 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 a point to show you the symbolism was all there. So I'm sure we're going to revisit that. But anyway, Eva's on her way to, to work. She's actually running a little late. She wasn't speeding though. She wasn't doing anything. She's actually making her way. She gets pulled over by the police and she's being profiled. She's being talked to really, really rough. And real, it was really a harassment. Um, and it was this specific policeman. He just was, na I mean, just nasty. And of course, some of her behavior wasn't the best. So I have to say that some of her behavior wasn't the best because again, you know, she is the CEO of a college. You know, she's the, the, the president, not CEO, it was the person, the president of the college. And her, her attitude was like very much given, child, really? You know, it was given that, but that wasn't working, baby, because behind all that power was that black face. And uh, it just wasn't working, and he was just nasty. I mean, literally yanked her out of the car and slammed her down. And she, like, you know, when he yanked her out of the car, she told him, get off of me. And she pushed him and knocked him down, honey. I think he got embarrassed. And he slammed her against the car like a man and all of this told her, you resisted arrest and you assaulted a police officer and all this. Put her in handcuffs and all of this kind of carrying on. And it was a mess. Got her down there, detained her, wouldn't give her her phone call. And I mean, just everything that he could do to her, he did and told her, this is my house. This, that, and the other. I mean, just picking. He was just picking. And I said, that's not, this is not going to end well. This is not going to end well. Um, because we know Eva. And I knew Eva wasn't going to take it laying down. So that's what we kind of dealt with with this whole episode. Cedric and Ebony actually, um, Roland Martin was actually on campus. And he was doing like these little pop-up little interviews. He was actually waiting on Eva to get there to interview her. Didn't know what was actually going on. But he had was talking to Ebony, and then Cedric butted in the interview was talking about she got bars, this, that thing, and the other, and on and on and on, and, you know, she is a music major and all of that, and then when they asked questions about Cedric, he just came across as like, well, I don't really know, I haven't really picked my major, this, that thing, and the other, Roland was like, get it together, but, um, he said, I'm getting more serious about my music. And Ebony said to him, if you knew that, why would you give me that your beat? Why would you give it to me if you were serious about it? Roland was like, child, what are y'all talking about? I ain't got time for this. He went on about, you know how he is, ignorant ass. He went on about his business. But I said, Ebony, pay attention because it's not about the beat. It's about you, baby. He wants you. He just don't know how to tell you. But I just laughed at that. We went on, Cedric and the girlfriend, Riley, they end up getting into a little bout back and forth because she was messing around on his computer being nosy and figured out that he was writing songs about the girlfriend that got 
got uh, murdered. And she actually had the nerve to say something to him. I didn't know you were still writing songs about her or whatever. He kicked her good old ass out of his apartment and told her, whatever, we're, we're done, go away. I I'm sick of this. I don't have to see. And she said, you can't just be stomping on my feelings like that or whatever. So she went on out the door, which bad timing, girl, for bad timing, because then it left the door open. Him and Ebony got into a little situation where they both talked about Eva, and he was saying, you know, I can't just sit here and not do anything. I have to go down to, to the police station, because he said, when I was in my situation, he said, uh, Eva, president, he said she was right by my side the whole time. And Ebony said she actually did the same thing with me when I was in the hospital and stuff. Said my dad, you know, said that it probably was to try to keep the school from being sued. But I'm not so sure if it was, you know. And they're like, okay, so they're just seeing, you know, you know Eva, she's good. You know, she got her issues, but she's good. So they talked about that. Then they were talking about some other stuff, and then they got all up in each other's face. And she said, "Ah, you got a girlfriend and stuff. Don't don't do that." He said, "I ain't with her no more." Hey, that's all Ebony needed to hear. Honey, next thing I know, baby, she leaned over there and laid one on him, honey, and then told him, "You got a condom, honey. You want this box, honey? Come on and get it." <laughs> so them two them went in all the way in. I said, mm -mm. "I like the two of them together better than him and Riley anyway." So that was fine. Later on. <clears throat> Uh, the very next day, Riley comes, because he was actually at Ebony's apartment. Riley comes and said something. She was like apologizing to him and all of this. And then she said, you smell funny. And she said, well, why do you have the same clothes on? I said, girl, what do you smell like, honey? What does he smell like, honey? Stoochie. <laughs> I said, you're like you lost your man, girl. And he wouldn't say anything. He told her, don't you still ride me this time? She said, oh, so I guess we really are done. He's like, yeah. And she laughed. I was like, oh, poor thing. Bye, bitch. Anyway, so that's it. That's it for her. Um, meanwhile, going on, uh, Jason and Sydney is becoming a thing. He's just weaseling his way in. Tell her, you know, I really want to ask you for a date, but I don't know if it's too soon with all the things that you went through. I think you really need a friend as opposed to somebody to try to date. He didn't ease his way. You know, he's slick, honey, with his cute self. He's He done moved in on Sydney. He got Sydney. So that's going to be an issue. Now, the ex-boyfriend came and told Madison, you know, I don't like him. What's going on with him? Is they smashing this, that thing, other? Madison was like, look, I can't even be talking to you. Me and Sydney just started talking again, and I ain't trying to get her mad at me by fooling with you. Um, and, of course, when she found out, she did get a little attitude with Madison, and Madison's like, whatever, Sydney. And as she said, this is the new rule. I mind my business, and you stay out of my business. Period. I said, girl, you just don't know. You're going down a bad, bad rabbit hole. But um, I said, okay, whatever. So they got that whole little thing going on. Um, let's see. Uh, Lila. You remember Lila. Lila was the the um, really sharp lawyer with the, the, the short uh, blonde hair that is Eva. She's Eva's personal lawyer. But she is the head of the DA, the head of the district attorney's office. So, you know, she can't be in on that case because definitely Eva against the, the police department is going to definitely come across her desk. But she brought a colleague of hers to take over for, for that. And they really want Eva to pretty much to, to chill. Uh-uh. No. We know Eva. We know she's not going to chill. So that's going on. Um... We finally get Eva out of jail. Cedric actually had gotten there. Cedric told her, she said, well, we're going to just like slip out the back door because of the press. And Cedric said, that's what they want. You can't do that. That's what they want. And she thought about it. They said, you're right. She went on out the front door, baby. Um, in the midst of it, and she was barefoot because she was in there. She's in there with this. She got into it with this inmate. But after a little fat check, her and Eva got to go back for Eva told her, listen, let me tell you something. I'm tired. I ain't for none of this bullshit. You should tell her, oh, really, princess? This, that thing. She said, yeah, okay. Don't let Julia fool you. Don't, don't sit around here and let my parents get you all the way beat the fuck up. 
And the girl's going on. And she's like, you're going to rub me them shoes. She said, you're not getting my shoes. These are the, my favorite pair of shoes. They they don't hurt my feet. You, the girl, leave me alone. And then she she read her down. She told her, she said, this, look at it. She said, this is stupid. She says, I'll fight you. Ain't no big deal. I ain't a problem with it. She said, but look at us. This looks stupid. Two black women fighting for what again? She's like, girl, I ain't got time. I'm not in the mood. I'm really not. And she's going to say, don't get it twisted, princess. We're nothing alike. The two of us, we're nothing alike. She said, whatever. So she told her, she said, um, when she read her, baby, she said, well, if I gave you my shoes, what are you going to do with them? I said, oh, Eva. <laughs> she said, I'm going to sell them. She is like, mm, really? She said, you know what? I'll tell you what. Is this fair? Whenever I get ready to leave, I'll leave them for you. You can have them. How's that? And sure enough, she gave them to her. She gave them to her. I said, Eva, I would have gave that bitch my shoes. But she came out barefoot. She went on out and did all that. So we got that going on. Of course, you know, Eva's not going to drop it. It's going to be an issue. Um, the cop, last thing we heard, the cop, he actually was on suspension. He was on suspension. And Eva kept asking for the, the dash cam. She said, I want to see his dash cam because his dash cam will actually tell what all is going on. And, you know, they were interviewing people in the neighborhood and the, and the reviews were mixed. Uh, there were some people that just scared to say anything and others was like, no, she wasn't doing nothing. You know, so um, and somebody even had the nerve to get on there with their black ass and say, Maybe this will uh, get them to stop being so bougie and them kids that said that school stop walking around with their nose in the air. Are you serious? Get your black ass back. Get to the house and shut up. I said, people are a mess. Just ridiculous. Anyway, last thing I'm going to talk about. The band is just not doing well because remember, Noni's out. So the saxophone situation, th there was like three of them. None of them were getting it. Cecil Diamond goes to Ebony and asks her, tells her, you know, there's, I still have a spot in the band for you if you want. Ebony told him off, baby. She told him, are you serious? Are you serious? Do you honestly, she said, I still get headaches. I still get headaches. I almost lost my life. Are you crying? I was in a coma. Do you think that I want to have anything to do with you or your band? Get away from me and don't bring that up to me again. And he said, I just thought she said, that's the problem. You don't think. You don't think at all. And that's one thing that I do see about Cecil. He has not said anything to them, has, to her or her parents. Haven't said anything until you felt a need that you wanted something. Because if, up until then, you didn't really give a shit. He had a really bad, self-centered type of attitude with him. Even though you try to like him, he's just not very likable. He's just a bastard. But anyway, later on, Ebony's dad came to the school and she had told him, you know, that he had approached her or whatever. Maybe her dad was like, oh, she said, OK, well, then she visited with her dad and her dad was going on off. He didn't even tell her mother that he was coming. Baby, the next thing I know, honey, the dad then eased his way around there to Cecil Diamond's office and told him, don't play any games with me. You all should be very, very glad that we didn't sue this school for everything that you have and your department especially. Stay your ass away from my daughter. I said, that's fine. Well, he don't want to hear no more of your shit, Cecil Diamond. Good evening. So I said, okay. And then the last thing we see, Eva taking it further, baby. She did an interview with Roland Martin, and it actually, the interview took a different turn than what they were really supposed to be interviewing about. Now it's a whole issue, and it's going to be a whole issue. So I can't wait to see the actual next episode of The Quad. All right, you guys, I'll catch you next week. Later.